about the CIA and all the people disappearing and stuff. Yeah, but the good news is, and I tell people this all the time because I get death threats. Do you think Matt Bryan would, do you think Matt, I mean, he, he's got to know there's probably some issues and there's lawyers that still work on Joe's thing. Do you think he would come after any of no. us? I don't at all. I think there's cover in how, how. Why do you think he came after Jeff? Because he's leading all that. He wanted Jeff the whole time. His fingerprints are all over the Las Vegas stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Funny about that. Jeff thought the whole time, but but Matt Bryant was like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And so they've, they've played long game with Jeff. Now, can Matt Bryant protect him from being indicted? That's the question. And I don't know the answer. Um, Jeff doesn't know the answer. I was even told that I that I might be indicted for the murder prior. By who? I don't know. That's preposterous. I'm trying to think. Well, Sandra even told me that uh, that that agreement. You know, you read the CI agreement. Yeah. You know, it's kind of. Well, nothing illegal can be done. Like I mean, it, it's it's bullshit. It's nothing illegal can be done unless they tell me I can. <laughs> right. Well, can they? I mean. I guess they can tell me to do, do, be illegal when I can do it. Okay. Here's a series of questions. So, James Johnson calls you and says he's going to kill Jeff Lowe. Um, you're like, eh, don't do that. You call Brian. What does Brian do? Tells me to call the sheriff. Okay. Make a report because, like, and then I was walking up pins and needles because I didn't want them to have that recording or whatever and say, you know, if, what if he would have killed Jeff? Right. So I called and asked, what do I do? And he's like, call the sheriff. So the sheriff, I called the sheriff the next day, the next morning. And the sheriff was like, we don't have any 911 calls from you. I said, yeah, you do. I sent him the recording of the 911 call. He's like, their phones are recording, whatever. So I sent him the tape. And I actually wanted that idiot picked up because that idiot just came out of a mental ward for like three days. So the guy was freaking goofy. Jeff Johnson, before he made that threat? Yeah, he was in a three-day lockdown or whatever. Um, these guys just clinically yeah. crazy. He seems and uh, and he doesn't know anything about anything. He he made he actually made a pass at Joe. Joe turned him down. Yeah, that that really did happen. Um, but he he knows nothing. He recorded. He says he recorded calls too. They didn't have them anymore. Yeah, whatever. That's why I never. Remember. So uh, I just called to see what what did he want me to do with this guy? And he's like, well, call. And the sheriff's you know, probably didn't do anything with it. Um, so I just sent him. I emailed him the tapes. What gets interesting on that, and I don't know if it's something yet or not, but then Jeff Johnson flips for some reason. He goes from anti Joe to pro Joe. Oh yeah, he did. He, he flipped about five times. Did he? Yeah, he was uh, Joe's fan, and he was trying to get Joe out. Then he's his fan, and he's trying to get him to go out. Then he hates Jeff. He wanted to go all after Jeff. Then him and Jeff are talking every day. Yeah, that guy. Whoever just, gave him attention. I guess. Whoever gave him attention. He was a fish star. And he had called me, threatened me. Well, I, I'm going to expose you because you know more than I know. You need to tell me what, what's going on. Like, he would try to force me to give him information. And I would pick up the phone call every now and then and kind of pacify the guy like I cared about him, whatever. You know, just because all they do is go to social media. And I have family and stuff. These people go after everybody. If you don't pay them attention, you're their target, then they're going to start calling family members or why, you know. They're a group of psychotic people. Like, all those people online are just psychotic. Like, in this Joe, in this Joe situation. Um, so, yeah. So, I just turned the tape over to the sheriff. So, and meanwhile, Bryant and James Johnson are chatting like little girls. Yeah, but I, I guess somewhere in somewhere when they were chit chatting every day, Jeff Johnson turned on Matt. Right, and then Matt would take in his calls. And Matt got afraid. 
And then Jeff Johnson was calling Matt's boss, is what I understand. Oh, yeah. Making all kinds of insinuations. And uh, and then Matt just stopped all communication with him. That might be a four year request, too. Yeah. So, so communication with Jeff Johnson. And Jeff Johnson was talking to Matt's boss, and he's like, I'm, I'm going to get answers from your boss or whatever. So, so then Matt somehow involves the marshals or some shit to keep Jeff out of trial. Like, they flip on Jeff hard. And all of a sudden, the death threat is used. So the death threat goes nowhere <clears throat> until trial when Jeff... And it was clear-cut the guy's going to go kill him. Yeah. It, it, as Jeff Johnson flips and trial is coming, then Matt, on record, becomes concerned about Jeff Johnson because of this death threat that he never even related to Jeff Blood. And so they, I think Jeff... I think Matt Bryant was afraid of some stuff that he had told Jeff Johnson and then wanted to keep Jeff Johnson far away from that courthouse and told the federal marshals, um, yeah. this guy made a death threat. Yeah, during all this stuff, Matt was telling us a lot of things that I don't think are appropriate, like talking about other people. Or pro- other people's problems. I don't know really what he had sense to say, but other than he was kind of loose-lipped. Because I don't think you should be telling people about other people's legal problems. What do you mean? You know, like he would, Matt Bryant would tell me stuff about, you know, about Jeff's case that he sent an agent to talk to somebody that Jeff sold a pet to. And like, why are you telling me this stuff? Yeah. You know, so he was kind of loose lipped, I guess. But everybody knew that Jeff Johnson, he'll flip on everybody. I mean, he flips. Like today, he probably in bed with Jeff Lowe today. And then tomorrow, he'll be in bed with Joe. Um, I think he's having trouble coming out of the closet. I met the guy. The guy's a freaking yeah. Um, so yeah, I just turned it over, and then that's the last I heard about it. And then somebody told Jeff Johnson that I recorded that call, and then Jeff Johnson started targeting me. You recorded our conversation. I had to record all conversations. So somebody told him that I had a tape of him threatening to kill. When? Him. I don't know. When it was going on? Yeah, when this was going. Because he called me, he's like, I can't believe you recorded that. You know, right. I might ask him, but... Um, Brian's working on sites, too. Yeah. I just still, I'll never understand. And maybe it's just because he's a little gossip monkey, but, but why he's having so many conversations with Chelsea and Jeff Johnson. I, like, I, Chelsea... Chelsea was never... She's never a part of it other than, like, there's, I guess... She was taking the mother's house or whatever. You know, I just heard bits and pieces of it. But Chelsea's name never came up during the investigation part of it, really, other than Chelsea's calling him. And, There's a text message from Chelsea to Lauren Lowe. I may have mentioned some of that. Where Chelsea, after after he's convicted, Chelsea says to Lauren Lowe, I've been trying for, finally, explanation for I've been trying for years and years to get him put away. And it's like, man, this is so fucked up. Like, it was so manipulated. And then you got Carol's communications, or Howard's communications with Matt Bryant from years before this. That's totally inappropriate, wasn't it? Talking about putting, infiltrating them? Mm-hmm. Can a government, I mean, why would a government agency talk about infiltrating somebody? Like, And it wasn't an agent or anything. To Matt's just, credit, he didn't really respond back in the email. Um... But again, as you seem to know, most of Matt's dirty deeds were done. Sounds like you. Well, I was Ashley Webster talking to Howard on a weekly basis. That's the question. Because that's, uh, I was told that she, she was on speed dial with Howard. After this? Like during the whole thing. But after she reported. They didn't know each other before that voice went on, I assume. Oh, well, I don't know. I, I, how it made how it sounded to me like she was a plant. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. And the fact that she didn't testify, are you fucking kidding me? She, she's attributed to starting all of this. She started it all. Mm-hmm. She's the reason Joe's in jail. And now Ripper's her age. This <laughs> is also stupid. Yeah, I don't. Like if you go to her Instagram, it says for media contact, contact Ripper. And she's a nobody. Like I I was there through this thing the whole time, and I, I never even heard her name mentioned. I didn't know that she was the one that actually called Carol till after this was all over and Joe was in jail. 
Nobody ever even mentioned the name Ashley Webster. I never seen her out there. Well, there's there's undisclosed text messages between Jeff and Bryant, or Lauren and Bryant. I think it's Jeff. Where Jeff goes, oh my God, did you know Alan and Ashley Webster were fucking? And Matt Bryant says, don't text this, don't text this, call me. Really? So apparently Webster and Alan were, and I asked Alan about it, he admitted that he fucked her several times. Oh! They share, they share, they share Ashley Webster's meds. So she had like some antipsychotic or or depressive or some shit. Um, And they share her pills and fuck. And so with all this date rape stuff, I'm like, when did she have time? Because she was only there a week. Well, you know why she she filed the rape charges, right? Because Tim Stark told her that he saw a picture of her naked on Jeff's bed. But Tim Stark will say anything to get Jeff because he hates Jeff. So that's what started all this. And then she made a, well, Ripper made her go file a police report. Really? Mm. Interesting. (laughs) Because Ripper, Ripper, you hear this from me, because I know. And I don't talk to him anymore, really. I talk to him like one really? time. Really? Anytime you say really, you No, I really don't talk to him anymore because I kind of... I'm out for the social media stuff. Yeah. Unless it's some fun stuff, I don't know post them. But So he put her up to call in Garvin County to file the police report. And he was trying to leak it to TMZ. So he was sending the police report number... Or, you know, when they give you a deal, say, you yeah, take yeah, a police yeah. report. And they were waiting for the actual real report to be filed, but he was trying to get it on TMZ. So, I guess that... That guy craves... That was his start, his stardom. His that guy was calling me thirsty, man. Like, No, he's super thirsty. Oh. But, yeah, so he put Ashley Webster up to calling and uh, filing the police report. Huh. But... That that's only word. Long time after that's that. she doesn't remember being raped. Okay, she doesn't remember nothing. She's going off Tim Stark saying she's going off Tim Stark saying he saw a picture of her naked on Just Bet. Did he show her the picture? According to the no. Because I asked Tim Stark, I said, "Do you saw that picture?" Well, no. It was made up. So she follows in. Just serious. Just a scumbag. Yeah, but that's not something you. You play with no, there because you can ruin people's lives. Fuck yeah. They did that uh, to another guy named Joe, Safari Joe. His ex wife put her kids up to saying that uh, he molested them. And I've known oh Joe for 25 God. years. Safari Joe. He's in Oklahoma. Yeah. He hates that Joe. But, uh, and he has to go through the whole court hearing. Was it Safari Joe that owned the park where the attack happened? Yeah. Yeah. He still does. Seen, I knew I'd seen his yeah. name. Joe Estes is his name. Yeah. And I was like, I know Joe's not like that. He's a family man. He's, he's a decent guy. And then the kid comes clean. Well, he's already been through the trial. So people already look at you as a yeah. pedophile. That's fucked up. So they were going to do that thing to Joe. And then Ripper was going to be the agent. And I'm like, I don't know. And the family should shut that down. But he, he's, he, you know, he thinks he's going to take Carol down this year or whatever. So I, I guess the family just thinks, hey, you know. They were thirsty. And, like, they were thirsty for justice. And so here Ripper comes, you know, from out of nowhere. And they trusted him and Rebecca too much. But doesn't, Netflix has an obligation to turn over evidence if they have evidence. Yeah. No. Netflix? What obligation are they under? They have evidence on Joe. They're not turning it over. Yeah, but don't they have an obligation if, it, if it's if it's part of a crime? If they if they witness a crime, not this crew wouldn't do anything. This crew was filming a murder for hire plot. Yeah, like the the, the, the there's a scene in epi- I think it's episode four, five. The only time I remember, every once in a while, you'd hear Eric uh, Rebecca's voice in a in an interview. Very rarely. Like, Good loves seeing himself on camera. Yeah. But there's an episode that ends, and it's the only time you that Rebecca's clearly in, in on the show. And they, they're they filming with Jeff, and Jeff keeps getting um, phone calls. Was it Jeff? Yeah, it was Jeff. And 
he's talking to Brian. And so he's like, I gotta, I gotta take this, I gotta take this. And Eric Good says something to the effect of, I think Jeff's communicating with the feds. Um, there's some stuff going on. And Rebecca says, and this is the last line in the episode, this, this used to be kind of quirky and fun, and now it's gotten really dark. And so that's how they end it with suspense. And I'm like, but it's not suspense. It's real lives. The darkness you know about, you recognize you knew about it, and you played it up because it was better for TV. Yeah, like, yeah, that's air good. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to just change the whole narrative. Because you got to think, Rebecca likes Jim. Fucking Eric hates Joe. Eric told me a couple times, don't help get Joe out. Because he hates Joe with passion. I think Eric is a, a little angel from PETA. I believe that. Yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. I can almost guarantee it. Because animal rights, they don't, they don't bother turtle places. Right. But he did have the USDA knock on his door. I think he... Yeah, he but he, he could have switched. But he's one of the New Yorkers. Yeah. He's a hardcore liberal Democrat. I know what you mean. Yeah, so hopefully you're not Democrats. But um, I'm, not, I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. Yeah, either. but you know, Eric is—he's got that Peta motive behind him. Yeah. Like what they're about to do to Doc, man. <laughs> Guy had to leave the country. Yeah. They said that's and poor Don. They're releasing, I know. They're releasing like five episodes and then three episodes. And I was like, why the gap? And she's like, shit's going down with Doc and we just need more time. Yeah, poor, poor, poor Doc. I mean, he got to, if I was still on t- talking to him to Doc, I'd talk, man, you just need to sell out and get the hell out of here. Because they're not going to stop on you. He thinks he can beat it. No, he can't beat it. Not going to happen. Doc has way too many skeletons. A lot. Just about euthanization of the Cubs? Or no, I mean, he's got, he's got a lot of... Is he? Yeah. But he he knows how to keep his circle. Right. You know, that's why he docks that so good. You know, he brainwashes them. There's a conversation at the very end of this stuff between Jeff and... And it was right after the fight. Jeff and Joe. And Jeff, Jeff is trying to bait Joe into... Saying stuff. He made him the whole time, yeah. But at the same time, there's this real conversation about why Winniewood, Oklahoma is the worst place to have one of these one of these zoos because you can't draw on anything. You got this poor Native American population and he's he's bringing in meth heads that are and criminals that are untrustworthy and paying them nothing, and they compare that to Antle's situation, which is at Myrtle Beach, right on you know, easy to get to and he has this family protecting him. Yeah. And they're like, you know, if we do to ever do this again, we got to do it different. Not Packerville either, but whatever. Yeah. Um, Packerville's even worse. Yeah. But um, Joe had Joe went through a shitload of money. I'm telling you, Joe had a Joe made money. Yeah. He just didn't know how to manage it. Like he made millions of dollars a year. Yeah. He just didn't have no clue to manage. But he, and, but he, and renting the husbands and stuff, I mean, like with Joe, those aren't husbands. He's never, none of them been a better in love with them. They're rental husbands. You know, Joe gives them some money, pays a car payment, gives them drugs. They're rentals. That's what people don't really understand. But yeah, Joe, Joe made money there when he would have home. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. You know, the, whoever controls the social media is a fool. Yeah. Whoever that idiot is, and then that, that private investigator, that guy is a dumbass. And he's done more damage to Joe than... That whole pardon thing. Like, the limo at the prison, man. You put tr- words in Trump's mouth. He's not going to like that. The limo in the prison, the fucking McRib. Like, Amy and I, I commented to Oklahoma News because I didn't represent it. Yeah. And I commented to Oklahoma News about how foolish and stupid it was, which got back to Joe, and he was just... It's one of the reasons he called me. He's like, what would you have done differently? I'm like, every fucking thing. Like, I represent Omarosa versus the DOJ. I I know that's not how you fucking play up to the DOJ. Like, 
like they never had they might have had a friend of a friend of Roger Stone or whatever the fuck their connection was I was like but that was never real that person was never going to actually get something to Trump to sign well I went to Washington the whole shit show I was there were you for the, yeah. for the I was there when they delivered the pardon application were you yeah, yeah. I was there in a room with Fran and all of them was that the room where Fran was drunk and running into walls he wasn't drunk when I seen him but I mean I don't know Probably seemed like you had a few of them, but yeah, it was. Uh, Netflix was getting mad because mm-hmm. he said that they had this meeting, and then uh, Eric said that the private investigator, whatever, everything, Eric Love. Love said that well, that person doesn't want to be on camera and he doesn't want to, so he would never mention a name. It was nobody. They were just there in Washington to to walk around and, and look. Yeah, because I was told we had this closed meeting, and I was going to go sit tell the fuck yeah. Whoever, I was going to just lay it all out. I was going to yeah. be like, hey, you know, y'all got to get Joe Sanders. Like, I got your back. You know, I'm going to charge you legal fees if you get in trouble. Yeah. And he's like, I was going to go get on the podium and say, yeah, yeah, and all this shit's corrupt. You know, it's all state. I was going to go to Trump. If they had a meeting with Trump, I'd have sat right in the office and told him. You know, I'm like, yeah, it was all a, a plot, this and that. And he never had a meeting. Tell me more about like the coaching or them telling you what to do or, or what they needed as far as securing the base. So I was told that I ha- I couldn't use certain verbiage, like as I was a part of the murder for hire, like we or us. You know, I had to make it other, you know, his idea, and not sound like I'm a part of the whole conspiracy. You know. Like when I was to introduce the FBI agent. Tell me about that. Whose idea was it to introduce the FBI agent? Um, I think that was Andy's idea. Who's Andy? Fairbo. Oh, Fairbo. I think it was a, a meeting between him and Matt, and they were going to introduce an agent. It was not your idea. No. And they were going to um, just have me make the introduction. And I was to basically just go in there, introduce them, and then step out. Not step out, but stay out of the conversations. Like, they didn't want me to go in there and talk about, well, let's dismember Carol. You know, I was supposed to just basically, you know, just make an introduction. Tell me more about trial prep. Uh, trial prep was on a, a Saturday. I forgot what day it was, but um, I know it's like a big. It was urgent that they do the trial prep on me, um, and I think there was a delay too. It moved. I think yeah, it the moved. trial moved. No, your 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 trial prep moved at a point. Yeah, because I had they a, switched you. Yeah, they they switched me, and then the only time they fit me in is on a Saturday. But the court date moved or whatever, and then they switched the trial prep. So I basically went there on a Saturday. It was me, Matt Bryant, a court reporter, Charles. There's a court reporter present. Um, a paralegal. Not, it was the assistant to Amanda Green. Okay. Or Charles, one of those was their assistant. She had run back and do this and that, but I think she was taking notes the whole time. Um... And then it was. You said Fairbo was there. Yeah, Fairbo was there. And, uh. Yeah, and then they just basically were just. You know, I don't remember all of the stuff that happened. So when they got to ask me questions, they had to remind me, basically. Because I didn't remember every visit. I mean, I've made so many visits there, I, I couldn't tell you a specific date. So they basically just went over the whole thing for hours, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I shoot questions like I'd ask them questions like, is, "Why isn't Jeff Lowe testifying?" They're like, "Well, it's not credible. We can't, you know, we don't want him on stand." And they really elaborated. They just said he's just not credible. Did they tell you what to say? Um, 
not really told me what to say. They basically just reiterated everything that I told them before. They didn't tell me to lie or anything like that. But they did, like, you know, I guess Charles was, um, his lawyer, and then they were playing roles, you know. They'd take turns, like, drilling me. And I'd forget a date or something, and they would remind me. Mm-hmm. And they'd ask me again. So it was just like, I don't know. I don't really know what you call it. And then a lot of this stuff I forgot because this thing's all been drug out for so long. And they would tell me, well, you said that, you know. So they would definitely correct me a lot. But they would correct you based on what you said in the past. In the past. Mm-hmm. So what about conversations with anybody when you got to the point where you didn't want to testify? Um, let's see, I called Matt days before and said, I don't even want to testify. Do I have to go? And he's like, well, you under dispute it. They're going to arrest you if you don't. And I actually called around some lawyers, but I couldn't find any federal lawyers because I was in the sticks in Oklahoma, or in Oklahoma. So uh, they uh, basically told me I had no choice. And then I called Joe's lawyers. Uh, I think Bill Early. And I think he just basically blew him up and said, it's a little late now. So there's no, like, threatening or if you don't testify? Yeah, Matt told... come after you for the lemur or something? They didn't say, they didn't really bring up the lemur, but Matt told me it wasn't a good idea and that they would charge me if I didn't obey a subpoena. That was emailed to you? Yeah, that was emailed. Can you legally email a subpoena? I don't think that's service, but I'd have to look at it. I sure shit wouldn't. It's not valid. (laughs) Because you don't even know if it was received or who received it. Yeah. I didn't get it. Oh, it went spam. Oh, okay. Oh, and then, uh, so, yeah, so when we're at child prep, Amanda Green tells me, uh, I'm not going to charge you with the lemur. She did tell me that. It's a child prep. I mean, hell, they helped set that up, too. I mean, not the lemur transaction, but the paperwork. JMP. Yeah, February 25th, 19th. Yeah, let me show the email. Do you know whether or not Eric Cowie was drunk when he testified? Eric Cowie's always drunk. I mean, uh, you weren't around him there, then. You weren't there then.
conversations did you have with Jeff regarding coaching Alan or helping Alan what to say or, or anything with Jeff setting Joe up? I didn't. I didn't, at the time, I didn't even know Jeff was like a part of it. I did know about like what he, Jeff would tell me things like, well, Matt needs him to say this and that. I heard that on a couple occasions, but that was, I only made the introduction to Jeff. And then you kind of just like disappeared. And then I disappeared. Why? Because Jeff was handling it from there on out, I guess. They had the major guy, Jeff, and all I had to do is get him to flip or make the introduction and then I was just out of it. Now you, the last, at the last part, it seems like the only thing you really needed to do was to get Jeff and the FBI agent to connect. And by then, yeah, I was out of, of it at that You point. were kind of out of it and Jeff was, Joe was pissed off at you for some reason, it sounds like. Well, yeah, because what happened is Jeff would, and Joe were fighting real bad and then this was when Jeff he would always bring my name this. up as somebody that well, you know, Jeff would tell me things about what happened at the pizza restaurant and then I'd call Joe out on it. So Jeff was playing the trying to be my friend, but let alone he told me I'm getting fucked and then yeah, it was just a the pizza restaurant, Joe's dealings, you know So just, much manipulation. Yeah. You know, Joe would tell me, well, the pizza restaurant's uh, not open, and then I called Jeff, and Jeff would take me a picture, take a picture of it with a line out the door. So <laughs> everybody was playing everybody. But once I made the introduction, I was pretty much kind of out of it. But you were instructed to introduce Jeff to Brian. Well, they want. They wanted. I had to call Jeff, and I said, "Hey, you know, Joe's being investigated. Would you help the feds?" Who told you to call? But who? Matt. Had, okay. Matt told me to call Jeff. So I said, "Hey, you know, I've been working with the feds, and they want you to flip because Joe's having some. You know, they're coming after Joe." And I set up the meeting, and then I drove Matt. Matt at the uh, casino and then drove my truck to uh, to Jeff's house and then made the introduction. And they were at one part in his kitchen and I was kind of like in his little living room area. And uh, they just basically, Jeff started playing all these tapes that he had. And then that's when I probably heard Matt say, well, he needs to say this and this. So you heard it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I wasn't like paying close attention, but... Jeff was just playing tapes for Matt. Because I guess Jeff already had this thing figured out. Because why would he be recording Joe the whole time? <coughs> and, but that's why I'm asking, when did Jeff know about you and working with Brian? Just like right right when I called him to see if he'll flip. I basically called him and said, hey, you know, the feds are here and there. and uh, they're, they're investigating Joe. And then he agreed. How quick was that after? That's the question, because that's not documented, because there's there's all those calls that we don't have a record of. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think when that was. It's just right when Jeff just started falling, in the, you know, is right before you know he had all got Mac got all the Glover tapes and stuff, because they were just talking directly. They weren't. Once I had made the introduction, I was just out of it, you know, because he had everything everything he needed. Because Matt Bryan was, I guess, telling Jeff what we need Glover to say and to make the elements of the case. Nobody recorded that conversation where Jeff was using the showing the map, right? No, that was before All the, that. the feds even got involved. Yeah. I mean, that was like the the first talk. Right. Before, you know, all the feds were involved. And Jeff basically was like, well, here's here's her house, and here's a bike trail, and here's this Brittany and that. Bear? 
<coughs> what? Was Brittany there? Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, Brittany was there. That's another one. Brittany was also there for that. You, you, you were here for that. For that. That two frogs meeting. I mean, if she wasn't on a witness list. Yeah, because Brittany was there doing the initial meeting because Brittany always said, it's fuck, it's Jeff's idea. Jeff yeah. came up with it. Joe was in the back. He wasn't even talking to us <laughs> unless we hollered across the room and asked him Joe a question. Wouldn't that have been a nice witness to have a trial for Joe to call? They didn't want her there. Yeah. Because that's what she would have said. She and was, she, she, I mean, when, when you... Did she went, ever, besides that two frogs, I'm sorry. Besides good. that yeah. two frogs conversation, did she ever talk to Brian at all? Or uh, anybody else? I, I always just reference Brian because I don't have any indication that you really talked to Farabelle much or anybody else. I, I didn't. I didn't talk to Farabelle unless he was there with Brian. Always? Always. I never talked to Farabelle by himself. So did Brittany ever talk to them outside mm. of that two frogs conversation? She might have talked to Matt on occasion because there's a couple times he came to my house. Um... But about the case in particular, no. I kept Brittany out of it pretty much. She didn't really know what all was going on. Um, she basically called it like, like what we're doing now, Brittany called it all. She knew like Jeff and Lauren were problems. And then, uh, yeah, so she pretty much called it all. She kept telling me don't get involved in this stuff because she had bad feelings about Jeff the first time she met him. But yeah, Fairbo, I've never seen Fairbo unless he was with Matt. How many meetings did they have with you and other witnesses? Aside from this meetings, like, what do you... Like discussing the case and who's testifying and who's saying what and... Well, they didn't tell me who was really testifying. I don't know, I caught wind that Jeff wasn't that Lauren was testifying. And I'm like, why wouldn't he testify? And I asked, I think, I might, I might ask Charles. I was like, well, he can't tell the truth. Like, How'd you catch that wind? I think they're at the trial prep. Was that? Yeah. At least they weren't going to call him. Yeah. Or I might ask Randall, I mean, it says Jeff testifying. And they were like, no, we're, no. And then somebody told me there was an argument to keep Jeff out of it in trial or whatever. Just not supposed to do that. I mean, the, the whole so in, in every trial, there's there's an exclusionary rule where you're supposed to stay in a box, and they don't explain that it's their obligation. But you're supposed to stay in a box and like not listen to what other witnesses are saying. But in this case, you got Eric Good calling, you got reporters calling, you got a wet, you got a Facebook page that's exchanging everything. They put me and Glover in the same room at trial. I don't know if that matters. Man. Put us in the same waiting that? area. They put him and Glover in the same room waiting to testify. Because I guess they were back to back. They were supposed to keep us apart. I mean, I was told, you know, not to talk to anybody. Did y'all talk about the case? No, we didn't really talk about it. We were watching TV. We just, we were just kind of watching TV. And then he went out, and then I went out. You sure? Huh? You sure? Yeah, we didn't talk about the case. The elephant. Because he was mad that I was in a... Yeah, he didn't right. even know that I was an informant. Glover? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Shit, shit. Oh, shit, shit. And then that Robert Moore, he was just stalking me like crazy. Robert Moore. So here's here's crazy thing about Robert Moore. I re-listened to it. And in one of the ends of one of the episodes, Jeff denies ever meeting Robert Moore. And I was like, bro, you were there. There's an episode, and it's Jeff's first time on the park, just visiting. And I think he's talking about buying a, a baby tiger. And Jeff and Joe go talk privately and then they come back out. And then Robert Moore asks Jeff about Carol Baskin. And he basically says that he had that Carol had fucked with him in South Carolina. And if that lady ever fucks with me again, I'm going to make her disappear like her husband disappeared. Oh. And it's recorded by Robert Moore and played from the first day Jeff's at the park. Really? And I'm like, um, guys, like, that's fucking evidence. 
And Robert Moore won't give it to me. But I'm like, it's in the podcast. It's friends with Rebecca. Rebecca like swears by him. Yeah. He won't give it to you. No, because now they've sold it, apparently. Out of peacock. But I'm like, that's Jeez. fucking evidence. Like, you just wait till I get federal subpoena power. Like, uh, either you cooperated or you fucking didn't. And if you didn't, damn. Yeah, he. I never talked to him, but he, man, he would blow me up yeah. twenty times a day. And they're making this show about him, and most of it's bullshit or more stuff. They don't have the real story. And they're making a movie over it, and that's going to affect other people because then you got all the idiots going to watch this shit. So I asked the guy that, that says, they're going to stop that Peacock deal. That looks would, terrible. I would put that on hold. Well, I'm hoping once we get our... I mean, the problem is we're not going to get our stuff filed until August or September, which I imagine that's going to be a fall premiere. But our stuff will be as, you know, the most truthful stuff to ever hit the air. Yeah. Because... I don't care how the facts work out. They're the facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you not like ranking? Because, I mean, he's, he's just a turd. You know, he's just a, just a turd. And he hates animals. He just, yeah, he's, he's just a super fake. Like, just a super fake. But, yeah, there's a, if you would have seen Joe at his height uh, with all the people at his zoo, it's, I mean, it was just like a misfit dimension. It was bad. It was bad. Um, I was, well, I'm now two years, but I was there prior to Irma too. So I've been there since basically like 2012. But I take a hate us. Sometimes I'll go to Texas for a while. It's fun, so. You guys have been nice, you? That's a good question. Oh, that's why you're not getting this stuff. Get the damn email address I have for you. Florida spelled wrong. <laughs> I'm doing it. So, I'm doing it. Oh, God. I was wondering. Yeah, you not showing up and me not getting emails? JMT at Florida, Florida Justice. Why? Yeah, I got you as Florida. FloridaJustice.com. Is there about two eyes or one? I've spelled it both ways. Um, he's in that other binder. I spelled it right in my summaries. Let's see. Hold on. Two. It's two. Two. Did that come through now? F A R A B O W. It's one. F A R A B O W. Yeah. Andrew. 
a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He did that, um, Eric Gibb did that with, uh, with, we were scheduling a meeting between me and Alan, and Eric got Jeff on the phone and told him that I was meeting with Alan, and Jeff's like, well, he represents Jeff, like, Jeff sent me the phone call, like, Alan, Alan flat says repeatedly, he perjured himself and perjured himself, there's, I just got the email. I don't know if you have this or not. I mean, you, you probably already have all that, right? Just by the way. Oh, shit. I'm trying to think what if I don't. It's Brady, but I don't have any emails, I don't think, between you and them. It's the whole thing about the selling the place and all that. Why did he send this to you? A summary of his report about you, I guess. Yeah. I do have a report, but I don't know if this is. Can you send it to me? Yeah. Did you get my last one? Yeah. All right. So yeah, I was sending to I was sending all these things to different emails. Yeah. Attaches the ping. I don't think that's valid. JP. JP. It doesn't matter. I'll get it either way. 